Okay, we're going to make the Dimitri style sauteed mussels. It's really easy. Okay, you're going to take a teaspoon of pepper, about a teaspoon and a half of kosher salt, a tablespoon of onion powder, a tablespoon or more of garlic powder, a heaping handful of crushed parsley, and about a half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. cup of flour. Keep them separate for the minute. Well, you don't have to. I, you could actually just throw this right in the bowl. I just did it to make it look nice for film. Get a big mixing bowl. Now, normally I would take a large plastic bag, but of course I don't have any right now. So I'm going to use a big glass bowl, mixing bowl. Put all my ingredients together and grab a whisk and just mix it all up. These were something that we had at Dimitri's at 3rd and Catherine in Philadelphia down by South Street. And this isn't the exact recipe, but one of my favorite things. I have memories of going there with my parents many, many times. At my grocery store, I'm sure at others in the seafood section, they'll have pre-cooked muscle meat. You can do it yourself. I've done it that way, but it takes an extraordinarily longer time to do it, do it that way. So you buy it, just drain them. You don't have to worry about drying them so much. And then because they don't have bags, I'm going to take some of the uh, saran wrap that sticks right to the top of the bowl and shake it until they're all well coated. Don't use too much flour because as you'll start to, you want to shake them off as you put them on a plate when we're done doing this step. And that way you don't have to sift too much because you can really use your hands for this. In fact, I recommend it unless you have, like, you have something welded, like a big sifter to shake them in. Okay, so you're going to take a plate, and then just with your fingers, take them out and you know, shake any excess flour off of them. It's okay if a little bit gets on the plate, because you're going to place them in the pan. You're not going to dump the plate in the pan. Okay, so you're going to take a big frying pan on about medium-high heat two to three tablespoons of whatever light oil you like to use. Canola is good, vegetables good. This is just extra light olive oil, not extra virgin. And you're going to place them in the pan. You don't have to worry about separating them or anything like that because you can shake the pan after they're in and they'll separate. But you don't want them piled on top of each other. The container that, you get at the, that I get at the store is usually just enough to spread about in the pan. You know, the temperature of the oil is really just about where it's really hot but not smoking, shimmering. With this batch, I'm going to leave a little room in the oil so that I can add some capers, which is something I tried recently, and it's really good. Um, you take some capers and you dry them out on paper towels, which I have sitting off to the side, about a quarter cup of capers. Okay, so you get the last of those in there. Okay, so I have my capers just in a little bowl with some paper towels. Made a little room for them, so I'll just dump them right in. You definitely want to dry those off, though, because they're usually in, in you know, whatever brine they come in in the jar. Okay, so you don't want to move them around too much. You can shake them up and keep them on the same side, but just keep them on that side. You don't want to spend too long cooking these. These are already well cooked when you pick them up at the store, so you're really looking only to saute and brown them. And after they've gotten a nice amount of heat on one side, you very carefully, if you're good at it, if not, you can turn them with a spoon You give them a toss. Do it a couple times to make sure you can get it many, as many as possible turned over. Just make sure they're separated. The capers are going to spread throughout the pan, as you can see. You just use a wooden spoon to make sure there's no clumping of the, of the uh, mussels in any part of the pan. Let that cook again on one side. Pretty much after that, as they start to brown on both sides, couple more times you'll give them a toss.
I'll even reach in and try a caper to make sure they're at least cooked through and that the skins are starting to crack open. Look at nice and crispy too. Actually, if you do them without in a separate pan than the mussels, I'm sure they'll even get crispier, but I did this just to add a little bit of salty flavor to the mussels. When they're done, you don't have to worry about adding salt to them because a lot of liquid of the capers is going to end up in that oil. Now either ahead of time or when they're resting, I take about a quarter cup of ketchup, a good heaping fork full of real horseradish, and you just mix it really well. I did this ahead of time, so I covered it and put it in the fridge for a little while. But that's perfect for the mussels. You don't, I mean, you could also do something creamy if you like. I would imagine ranch dressing goes good with anything, especially sautéed and slightly crispy. Honey mustard would be good. Anything would be good. Whatever you like to dip in, what I'm saying, would be tasty. So, you can prepare this several ways. In this instance, I put it on a plate with a heaping handful of baby arugula, some fresh lemon, and of course the dipping sauce. After they're on the plate, and don't do it in the pan because it'll really ruin the crispiness, squeeze a little lemon on the mussels and enjoy. This is The Hungry Attorney, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this one. It's a very special recipe for me.